uh, next in the pack. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member for Macquarie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the <coughs> Treasurer. Will the Treasurer update the House on efforts to modernise Australia's economy and increase economic growth and jobs through competitive competition reform? How does competition and productivity encourage innovation and efficiency to provide greater choice and improved services? The Treasurer has the call. Thank you, thank you Mr Speaker. And th I thank the member Macquarie for her question. As members may be aware, uh, today the government has outlined its response to the Harper review of uh, competition policy, and, and the government has accepted in part or in whole 44 of the 56 recommendations and have rejected none. Because we know, Mr. Speaker, we know that it's important that if you want to grow the economy and grow jobs, you need to have greater choice for consumers and you need to deliver better services. And that's why our response to the Harper Review, which was released just before question time, comes together and forms part of the broader platform for growth and jobs in our economy, whether it's in freeing up new markets or whether it's our $50 billion national infrastructure plan that is being rolled out, whether it's about having a better tax system that ensures that we can uh, remove the impediments from Australian businesses and for Australians who are being held back uh, every day and who are out there working and saving and investing. What we have announced today, Mr Speaker, is part of a competition and productivity agenda, because we know as a government that over the next 10 years we know that we won't have the situation that particularly those opposite had, where commodity prices and terms of trade could pape over their inability to deal with productivity challenges. And we know Member that right across the economy, at every level of government, you need to pursue the microeconomic reforms that are going to shore up and improve living standards for Australians so they can earn more and, as a result, the government can raise more and we can be in a position to not only fix the budget, Mr Speaker, but we can ensure that Australians will be better off. Now, our response today is about, it's about better services, it's about more choice and it's about a stronger economy, Mr Speaker. And we know that from previous reforms under the Hilmer process, which was started by those opposite, embraced on the, by those on this side of the House, it ensured an increase in GDP of 2.5 per cent. And what we've done in our response to the Harper Review today is to say we want to go with Hilmer Mark II through the response to the Harper Review. We do want to put in place a system of competition payments, of productivity payments, working with the states and territories to ensure that they can focus on reforms in areas like planning and zoning and retail trading hours and in areas of road financing and, and infrastructure funding and all of these issues. That These are the issues that we know will grow the economy and grow jobs. And we are going to work consultatively and collectively with the states and territories to drive those reforms at a micro level, which will ensure the jobs for future Australians and ensure that we can, in particular, in particular, we can deal with the growth in our services economy, particularly social and human services, because that's where the growth is, Mr. Speaker. Those young people who are coming out of school today and are in going to training colleges and universities, they are going to find jobs in the health service sector, in the human services services sector, and Australia will be a leading provider of these services to the rest of the world. Our response today to Harper ensures that we have a clear plan for realising that opportunity.